and there she is, the toughest vault ever constructed. Thanks for watching. Video over. Just kidding, guys. That's just the safe for the silencers. That right there is what we're actually talking about here today. Today's video has been two freaking years in the making, and I am super excited about it. If you guys cannot tell, uh, because I've been working really hard on this thing, and I'm really excited to show it to you guys. You've seen little hints of it here and there uh, through a couple different videos, and I, I can honestly say that I'm very sad that I didn't have the foresight to take pictures of this space before I started on it, because I never thought that this was going to be something that would see the light of day because I just thought it was going to be a place to securely store my firearms. Now, the audio is going to get a lot better here in a second because I've basically turned this space not only into a vault room, but also a studio. So it sounds pretty good in there. I promise the audio will get better, but I wanted to talk out here real quick about security because as responsible firearms owners, that's always something that we talk about securing our firearms when they're not in use. So let's talk about security for a second. Check this out. So first off, this structure that's around this whole thing is solid concrete. Trust me, super pain in the butt uh, to work on because it is solid concrete. Two pieces of steel reinforced laminated concrete uh, with a little bit of air gap in there so you've got that kind of uh, reactive armor effect if you will and then below it the foundation is poured concrete block trust me i know it's poured because i had to run the hammer drill through it the door itself oh boy do we have a story here i'll try to make it brief i'll try to cut it short but about two years ago i contacted a company and said hey i need a you know custom vault door made because i'm a little bit space limited here if you guys don't know if you never tried to do this before uh, safe doors come in basically one height and they only get bigger and wider from there. So I'm a little bit space limited because I got like duct work here and I wasn't going to reroute the whole system just to make <laughs> just to make this vault space work. And it just wasn't going to do it. They said, yeah, sure, no problem. Uh, six months, this much money, and we'll have her done for you. So six months goes by, I call them up and they're like, hey, uh, yeah, we haven't started on it. Uh, we're going to charge a little bit ever, a little bit extra because uh, we're pretty swamped. I said, yeah, no problem. Go ahead and do it. Just let me know when it's done. Six more months go by, not done. Call them up and they say, yeah, we haven't got to it. It's going to cost you $8,000. And I was like, F you, cancel it. We're done. Uh, and what did I do? I went to Rural King and I bought an 84 gun safe. Thing weighed a thousand pounds, loaded it on the trailer, drove it over to the shop, cut the front of it off. A family friend owns a steel shop and they fabbed this frame for me. I probably could have done the welding myself, but it would never look as pretty as they got it. It looks like one solid piece. Uh, this is super thick and it is reinforced because safes in general have kind of thin walls. Uh, so they put reinforcements on the back of this thing. So it is on there. So let's talk about keeping that sucker on the wall there. Uh, first off, it's heavy as crap. It took seven men to carry it in here without the door in it, the, just the frame. And we're not talking little men like me, we're talking big corn-fed mother. We took a page out of the hydraulic lift that we have in the shop over there, and we used really long lag bolts and this stuff. This is A7 locking compound. It's basically an acrylic concrete to everything adhesive. We used quite a bit of it. You couldn't really be in here for about three days. That door is held on with 15 of them. The hydraulic lift is held on with 16. I went ahead and mortared the thing to the wall, as you can see there across the top, just to make sure that it's not going anywhere. So that said, between this, this, the door, the frame, and the concrete, you could probably get in there with an AT4 if you had one, but even then, uh, you might have to shoot it a couple times. And I suppose on top of that, I mean, I have problems if you bring the wrong size dog in this room, that motion sensor over there kicks off. Uh, so the fire of an anti-tank rocket probably uh, can trip that sensor. <laughs> but anyway, enough about the outside. Let's go take a look inside. Display lights. Wham! 
So we're gonna get to all the materials that went in this room, how we did it here in a second. Uh, but this is where I'm gonna be talking about the part that's unfinished here. So you can see this solid uh, concrete right here uh, with a gap in between. So you can see how thick that is. And then of course that's reinforced concrete uh, with steel. But the, uh, the reason I mentioned that is I was going to finish it this morning, but I cracked the last thing of uh, acoustic foam, which is what you see here. One of the reasons it's so dead as far as sound is concerned in here. I cracked the last one open to, to glue it open or to glue it up the last uh, package and it had burn marks in it and I'm not going to put up substandard stuff and I'm not going to post uh, what vendor it is either they don't deserve the press and I'm not one to kind of relish and ripping on another company they just won't get my business again but I wanted to point out that I left relief space here between the block and the door because the 84 gun safe that I used to make this came with one of these. So you can see here that there are space for like handguns in the back of the door. So why not use the space? Why would I, why would I eliminate that? So there's enough relief in there that I can even get that MP5 in the door there. Now, as far as firearms retention throughout the room, we're going to do another around the world here. This is all tactical walls mod wall. You guys have seen this stuff before, it's really cool. So I have a sample to show you guys here of the stuff up close. And basically what you can see here that you can't see on the wall is basically the shape of the grooves there. I'll throw a tight one in there that's not focusing properly. But the way this works is you have these attachments of various type. This is an AR-15 magazine shape one. And you basically push it into the hole and then the thing slides like that. And then you can put your rifle on top of that, they have a bunch of different attachments that we'll get to here in a second. Uh, but this is then secured. You can see it's a half inch thick approximately. This is secured to your wall through the studs. How I secured them is I used little screws, lots of them, and I furring stripped this whole space and then I ran tap cons with the hammer drill into the wall. If you don't know what a tap con is, it's like the greatest thing ever. Uh, but it's secured all the furring strips all the way around the room. And then on top of it was mounted the mod wall. So if you are filming from a vantage point that is darker than your subject matter, then the camera usually auto attenuates and brings everything into range. And usually your foreground gets dark like that. And I'll get better pictures of this. Uh, when it's dark outside so you guys can see what's actually going on inside here And again, I really wish I had taken pictures of this space before I started because this was like a muddy floor It was like leaking in to the basement. It was nasty moldy and all that sort of stuff We basically poured the floor wet made it seal up real nice and then uh, Also replaced the window with glass block and I hadn't really conceptualized the idea of the display lighting that you see here, so I wanted ambient light to be able to come in and uh, in hindsight, I don't really need it now, and I'm probably gonna get a blackout curtain to put over that for filming during the daytime hours uh, because it's, it's not necessary and it kind of screws with the lighting in here a little bit because I want all synthetic light. Now, that said, you can't have a glass window in a vault room. Uh, because it defeats the purpose of all the other stuff that we put in here, right? So, my boys from ShootSteel.com made me a hardened steel grate. The same guys that do our targets that we shoot those guns at all the time made me a hardened steel grate to go over this thing. And on top of that, this also allows me to still use the window vent. So if we care to, we can vent it off in here. And if I was like doing something and I burn something or something like that, then we can open that vent, get some fresh air in here, allow the room to breathe. Not like we don't have a dedicated dehumidifier over here. But the idea was that if some dirt bag comes in, tries to smash that, they're gonna hit that steel grate. Uh, the space there in the center is not really big enough for a human being to get in. Uh, maybe a small child or something like that. <laughs> I suppose if you want to. Uh, child abuse and of course we have a dedicated motion sensor for this room as well that's got both the door and the window so uh, and I will admit that the cops are pretty quick on the response time on that sucker uh, I tripped it in the middle of the night one time that was that was not a good experience I was in trouble for a little while so the lighting I think really makes the room the display lighting 
It goes really well with the functionality of the mod wall. And I knew that I really wanted to use mod wall. I've seen it at the shows. I've known the dudes from Tactical Walls for a long period of time. And I've always wanted to do something with it, but I just never had an opportunity to do it. And I'm the kind of person that if I'm going to do something, I'm a go big or go home kind of guy. And I think we accomplished it here. Big shout out to the guys from Tactical Walls for putting a big step forward and helping us complete this room. To give you an idea how that effect was created uh, and kind of the behind the scenes, so to speak, I wanted two pieces of display wall and then another piece of display wall below it. And I wanted the display lighting to point at this big section right here on both the top and bottom. Well, I needed to create a buffer zone. So the way we did that, and it just so happens that uh, uh, acoustic foam comes in one foot sections. So if you divide one foot by two, then you end up with six inch pieces. At least I believe that that's what my public education taught me. And uh, that works out to a half inch gap on either side of each piece of plywood. And if you are a gun person, are you going to get out the tape measure and measure each time? Or are you gonna find something that's a half inch already? So I happen to have these extra 500 JRH rounds left over from when we did the BFR video uh, with Magnum Research. Go ahead and check that one out, it was fun. We use these as basically our spacer pegs and we could do that because we cut everything on the table saw, which is pretty much the preferred method for large cuts, both on the plywood and the mod wall. And we had laid the room out with the laser. Now, up above my head here, uh, obviously we have all the wires and everything that makes this thing run. Uh, but we have 18 inches of solid concrete above us and to hide all of that, I put this drop ceiling in and it also helped deaden the room quite a bit. But I thought now uh, what we do is just kind of go through and look at some of the attachments that we got in here that make the mod wall so modular and make this room as cool as it is. Uh, so real quick, <laughs> the easiest one uh, that is outside the box is the plate carrier holder right here. <laughs> uh, it holds my plate carrier up. And uh, this is a fairly light plate carrier, so I didn't even need any extra screws to, to support the thing. Like this doesn't flex at all and it supports the plates just fine. Next to it is the helmet holder. I don't have my helmet yet with my night vision. I'm hoping it's on the list of things to do this year to get a good set of night vision. Hopefully my buddy uh, Todd Huey down at Lone Star Outdoors will be able to hook me up. Uh, with some good night vision. I do a fair amount of filming at night and I've been running into a lot of things, chipped tooth and all that sort of stuff. Just sits right on top of that kind of like SR25 shape 308 mag attachment there. Really quick, uh, Dave White at NSR made me a Deagle holster. That's what the helmet mount can be used for right now. Uh, but AK attachments, uh, I got a couple more AKs down here I'll pan for you guys, but basically, Right there is where the, the latch would, would click in. So this C39 V2 pistol that we recently did a video on uh, awaiting paperwork from the ATF. So this is a Canik, but the same attachment, double stack magazine attachment, works for Deagles as well. So that's the same uh, attachment point, works for both of those. And of course we have a Glock 21. There's some guns that are more temporarily mounted. So shotgun, obviously ready to go whenever I need it. This one is due to go back. This is the Hotson Hercules Bully that we completed a project on. It just needs to be shipped back. I haven't gotten uh, around to shipping it back to the manufacturer for analysis uh, after we beat the heck out of it. And this gun uh, you may never see this gun in this configuration again because it's getting ready to be retrofitted with some new hardware. So they're kind of like set up in these vertical wall mounts to be ready to be removed. They're not hard mounted to the wall yet. So what we've got here is a Hida mag ready to go. So this is a magnet, a very powerful magnet, and I'm just going to let this suck the gun from me. So. And now there's a little bit of weird geometry on the side of that thing, uh, but it easily holds that gun up. And I've actually, over here, I have my Glock 19. I've kind of stolen the mud girl's space on her wall, her magnet attachment over there to leave my uh, 19 in the holster so that I can just put it on my pants when it's ready to go. Shelves for various things. This is the controller for, for the colors on the wall. 458 SOCOM, and then here we have some oddball stuff 
So if you've got guns that don't accept magazines, like my Henry 4570, this is like my hunting rifle here, you can see that there's no like mag space to really put into the wall. So what we have here are horizontal hangers here. And this basically is just like any other gun rack that you would have, uh, like a shotgun rack or something like that, uh, mounts the gun up right like that. Alrighty guys, so that is the tour of the VSO Vault. I hope that you guys had a good time watching this thing. I had a great time making it. It's been a long time coming. I'm excited that it's done. And you guys probably see a lot more of this space now that it's complete because I plan to use it for some like artistic filming type stuff as well as uh, commentary. Uh, because I'll be honest, the audio is better in here than it is in my office where I film the, the voiceovers for various things. I need like a tablet attachment. That's dudes. That's it. Tactic walls, tablet attachment. No, but seriously, if you guys do have ideas for attachments for the mod wall, leave a comment in the comment section down below because I'm sure that the dudes from Tactical Walls are going to be roaming the comments down there and I, I'm sure they'd love to hear from you guys. But that said, we have one more thing that we have to do this place to christen it, to make it operational. And that is, check this out, a viewer, a fan actually mocked this up and sent it in. So this is like the back of a casing, but this thing, look how thick this stainless is. I mean, this thing is heavy. This is heavier than a plate. So what we're gonna do here is I've gone ahead and put some Tapcons in the wall right there. I test fit this to make sure that it was not going to, to come off the wall. Does that not look sharp or what? Thanks for tuning in here at the VSO Gun Channel. It's always great to have you guys here. Thank you for tuning in and hopefully we'll see you guys on a future video. I still can't figure out how to work um, over here. So there's a sensor over there somewhere. I still can't figure out how to operate. There's too many buttons on this thing. I don't even watch TV. Thanks, Alberto.